So, work object as a reference. And uh, usually we have a specific reference and not uh, the one which is in the base of the robot. And usually we also have uh, another tool frame than tool zero. Tool zero is uh, the end frame or the end axis of the robot, so to say, or end joint. But uh, this normally like they had the new L, we have the target here, we have the velocity, we have the smoothing factor, we have the tool, and we have the work object defined as argument in that instruction. Move J is usually done to move quickly from one point to the other one, usually in space when we don't bother about how we move actually. So the robot just moves interpolating its own axis by axis. And we usually never come into any problem with singularities. We don't have problems with configurations, but we we'll have to think about actually how it moves when it should start in a certain configuration and mode after the move joint. So, Basically, it is as a similar function as the move L, but this is faster in most cases for the robot. Does computation affect motions? That's a good question. And in the simple case, no, but in some cases it really does. So what happens is that the code is actually calculated ahead of the robot motion. So if you have a move linear here to target P10, and then we have a quite simple calculation in this case, we update a, a register one, add register two with three and so forth, and put that in one, and then we move linear to P20. What happens is that the code is calculated ahead of the motions. So that calculation here, register one, is done before the first move L. Um, so things are going ahead and the robot is moving after um, things are done, so to say. And the corner zone set 20 before the robot reaches P10. So what happens is that the robot controller can calculate the robot movement in corner paths, even if there are instructions in between the move instructions. However, if there is a wait instruction after a move instruction with the corner zone, like this one here, the robot will not be able to handle this. So in that case, if here after the first move L instruction, we have a weight instruction, we should use a fine argument, a full stop, before a weight instruction. And that makes sense because if it waits, it has to stop. I mean, that's just the reality. So there's a limitation as to how many and complex calculations robot controller can calculate in between move instructions with corner zones. This is mainly a problem when calling procedures after a move instruction with the corner zone. So there are some things to think about sometimes. Then we have input and output signals. We have invert digital output, pulse digital output, reset, set, set, analog output, set digital output, or groups of digital outputs. We have some reading IO values, some examples could be if digital input one equals one, then we could have if AI greater than five or two, then we can have some error handler if no contact with the unit. unit. We have interrupts. They are used by the program to deal with events regardless of the current instruction. So typical interrupts are an inter 
put or output is set to one or zero. A given amount of time elapses after an interrupt is ordered or a specific position is reached. So if these kind of things happen, then maybe we want to have an interrupt. So the robot should do something else. We have error recovery options. Um, so in general, these are ways to handle things that shouldn't occur and the robot should be able to start over, maybe position itself in a home safe position and maintenance person can go in and do some some, some maintenance or, or service procedures or whatever. And then it's easy for the system to actually, to for the operator to restart the whole system after these kind of things happened. In addition, there are some mathematical functions, assignment like adding, incrementing, decrementing values. Uh, we have all the normal uh, functions like uh, cosinus, sinus, and so forth, rounding, truncation, square root, and also some matrix operations. Backward execution. Can we go backward? Sometimes it's useful if you run a program in the robot, do some debugging, go forward, back, forward, and so on. And it do support backward execution, except that we can not move out of, I mean, if we have a procedure call or we have conditions like if statements, why instant statements, for loops and so forth, these are quite tricky and we cannot go backwards past these kind of things. So, um, Take care about going backward. Then we can do some messages to the teach pendant, of course, that is possible with the TP write instruction and some example code. Okay, here we have a, a just a simple procedure that uh, draw a square and we have a procedure draw a square the side size, which is a numerical data type. And we have variables, rob target, P20, P30, P40. And now we have a comment that P20 is set to P10 with an offset of the Y value. And that is in this statement here, P20 equals offset P10. And uh, this is x, y, z, so x is zero, cell side is y, and z is zero. And then p30 is offset p10 with x, y, side size. And p40 is offset with only the x as side size, the other is zero. That means that we, if we move around from P10 to P20, 30, 40, and back to P10, we have a square of equal side size. And then we move actually from this velocity 200, full stop with the, with the tool T pen. So we move around from the different positions like this one. And in the main, the call, the procedure draw square with the value 100, 200, 300, 400 millimeter side size, and then these kind of squares will be drawn. So, some considerations related to coordinate systems in the world based the robot, and the user, object, tool. So the base corner system is the origins in this intersection of the axis one and the base of the surface, like this one. So the XY plane is the same as the base mounting surface. The X axis points forward, that one. The I, Y axis to the left, and the Z 
upwards. Or just think that the set is always upwards than the y we can mathematically. Then we have world corner system. So if several robots operate within the same workspace, a common world corner system is used. Like, like these here. So we have a world corner system, and then we define where is this robot, where is this robot. And they might be all oriented in different ways. And a user corner system, typically used for defining the location of fixtures or work tables in the workspace. So uh, we might have then a world corner system, we have a base, and related to this, we might have then this used corner system one and the second one here. Then we have object coordinate system. So these are used for fixtures, surfaces, objects, whatever, and based on the user coordinate system. And the programming positions are always defined relative to an object coordinate system. So usually we work like this, that we have the world, and from that we define a user corner system. And from that one we define the relations to object corner systems. And this can may in that case define a fixture plate or, or a, a table or, or something like that. And on that we have different object corner systems or different objects within that workstation. And Based on these frames, we define maybe targets that operates on the respective objects. If these are then moved around, then everything will follow locally here. Then we can have displacement coordinate systems if you want to um, be able to recalibrate the position of objects, maybe a new orientation and so forth. And um, we can also have frames related to moving frames that reflect a track motion device. And for the wrist corner system, so um, that relates to a tool mounted on the mountain flange and then a two center point is typically then reflecting that we have a tool mounted here and we have two center points somewhere out in space outside the robot like this one so a tool could be curled like this one and pointing in another direction than the this mounting flange or this is reflecting a spot welding gun or just a gripper with different orientations.